with Brock is that Brock went from pro wrestling to being the UFC heavyweight champion. I mean, and did so with such a short amount of time of training in MMA. I mean, obviously he had a, a spectacular amateur wrestling career. He was a legit top flight amateur wrestler and a fucking genetic freak, mm -hmm. all those things. But to yeah. be able to make that transition to, to winning the fucking world title against a guy like Randy Couture, I, I don't think he gets enough credit for what I think a lot of people say, oh, he was so big and he was this and that and he did steroids and there's all these excuses. Like, you don't understand what that guy did. Like, what that guy did is n nothing short of insanity. Like, no one's ever done that before. No one's ever gone from, I mean, the way he did it too and to, to <coughs> fucking... To, to get in there and beat a guy like Randy, who's, you know, one of the best of all time. Like, Randy was a real pioneer, and Randy was still really at the top of his game back then. It wasn't that, it was just, he was just fucking a freak, just a real freak. Like, I always said that if, like, that guy, like, fresh out of college, like, if we were in a different era, like, if he's coming fresh out of college today, and someone like Faraz Sahabi or, you know, Henry Hooft, like some top flight MMA instructor gets a hold of him as a young man and teaches him how to really teaches him how to strike where, you know, he's comfortable and, and, and he can move just like like elite guys of today. Fuck. He would have been unstoppable. He would have been unstoppable. He's a monster, brother. He's a monster. He still is. Still is. So he's the, like the biggest genetic freak maybe I've ever ever seen in the sport. Me and my crew used to go to the Royal Rumbles for a few years, a few years back. Yeah. And, we, and you, there's 30 people. One comes out every minute. And that's where you really see what a freak he is because it stands out amongst 30 other wrestlers. You can tell with two, but with 30, and he comes in and he's flying. He's faster than the other people. He's stronger than the other people. It's, it's the closest thing to it is like watching LeBron James play basketball. You're like, how does he move like that? He just got to the hoop in two steps, and that's what he's doing in the wrestling ring. You ever see his NFL combine numbers? Uh -uh. He had, like, legit top-flight combine numbers, like ridiculous numbers. See if you can pull those up, because just... A fucking freak, man. Yeah. Like a real rare one. Very fast, too. Like his run was fast. Look at this. 6'3", weighs 283 pounds. A 40-yard dash of 4'7". 4'7". That's seven crazy. At 283 pounds. That's insane. Jump 35 inches vertically and 10 feet from the standing long jump. 10 feet. He's <laughs> hurling 10. He's hurling almost 300 pounds. 10 feet. He can bend 225 pounds for 30 reps. 225 for 30 fucking reps. <laughs> That's crazy. Dude. Oh, look, it's me. Astounded. <laughs> I've been astounded multiple times by that guy. That's he, crazy. Th there's a few guys that I say, he like. He can still go, brother. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he can still, still go. Well, there was talk about him fighting again in the UFC just fairly recently, like a few years ago. You know, I mean, I'm sure in the back of his head, he still wants to stomp some people, you know? He's intense, brother. I mean, I've, last time I was around him, I was in Saudi Arabia with him. You know, he's real intense. You know, he hasn't changed a bit. I mean, the guy went from, he goes and fights Frank Mir, who's a former UFC heavyweight champion, you know, like, right into the top of the food chain, gets leg locked, comes back and beats Frank Mir in the rematch, just beats the shit out of him. I mean, he was a real, he was the real deal, man. And a lot of people don't give him enough credit. And then he, the, then there was a the problem with the diverticulitis. So he had to get a, a long section of his intestine removed, I believe. Yeah. I believe it was in his intestine. Well, yeah. he eats everything that he hunts. That's the yeah. deal. Yeah. You know, so he's always out hunting stuff. <laughs> I don't know why, how you get diverticulitis. Um, Anthony Bourdain told me it's a real mystery because you could actually get it from a seed. Like a seed could get stuck. He goes, it's not just like people say, oh, he ate too much meat. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. He said there's a lot of things that could have happened. But either way, so he has that, and then he comes back and fights Alistair during the Juicy Juice days mm -hmm. when Alistair was on everything known to man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think he just got kicked in that spot, right? Exactly. Is that what happened? By a K-1 Grand Prix champion. Like, mm. Alistair Overeem was the elite of the elite for kickboxing, and he was saucy. I mean, wow. he came in saucy. He, well, there was no USADA back then, so you just had to pass a test on the day of the weigh-ins, oh, which God. is like an IQ <laughs> test. Yeah. And then just using all these masking agents and shit. There's like, you know, it's, it's a different world back then.